Hello folks, got the Commodore 64 on for this review and I'm going to take a look at another budget Commodore 64 compilation. This one was released by Codemasters and it's called Quattro Firepower, consisting of four shoot 'em ups So let's take a look at the fact file for this little compilation. So Quattro Firepower was released in 1991 in PAL territories, published by Codemasters. And there's three developers across these four games, Paul Black, Martin Sexton and two games by Gavin Rayburn. And the price I paid on eBay was £1.50. Going rate is currently about £3, sometimes a little bit more, but you can pick it up for a pretty cheap price. And the original price for this compilation was £2.99, so you're basically getting four games for three quid, 75p a game. Let's take a look at the games now and the packaging and decide whether four games for three quid was actually worth it or not. So here we have the packaging for the game and as you can see pretty straightforward stuff on the front. It says Quattro Firepower and there's, and there's the four pieces of cover art for the original releases of the games I presume. So we've got Poltergeist uh, which suggests it's like a Ghostbusters game there. Uh, MiG-29 which is obviously some kind of flying shoot 'em up game I guess. Uh, Laser Force which looks like your typical space shoot 'em up and Terra Cognito which again looks like something set in space and the spine of the box has got just the logo on Quattro Firepower and then on the back we've got some screenshots and also some more info about the four games so you can see Poltergeist there definitely isn't a Ghostbusters style game it looks like a horizontal scrolling shooter then we've got MiG-29 which looks like an afterburner clone and we've got Laser Force which looks like a vertical scrolling shooter up and we've got Terra Cognita, which is mostly obscured by a barcode, uh, but again, looks like a vertical scrolling shooter. And uh, as you can see, not a lot of information about the games themselves. There's a few quotes there um, from magazine writers, and also at the bottom, the uh, typical quote from Codemasters Games It's absolutely brilliant by David Darling. And inside the cover, we've got some more information about the four games which you can read there nothing much to say about that other than basically just explaining what the four games are which are mostly scrolling shoot 'em ups along with a afterburner type game interesting it says there for the MIG game realistic takeoff and in-flight handling confront stealth aircraft tanks warships the latest sophisticated weapons including nuclear for total aerial combat experience I'm not sure there's ever been any planes that fire nuclear weapons but there you go uh, yep yeah, so then there's some adverts for the other quattro compilations so we've got um, quattro super hits and quattro arcade and then finally we get to the instructions for the game so you've got the usual loading instructions and the controls and everything for each of the games and what you've got to do in each of the games uh, lots of information for laser force there, lots of different sectors and then we've got Terra Cognita fly over icons, get bonuses, get extra lives, make yourself invincible etc Poltergeist again just got the controls for that avoid all alien life, shoot gun turrets so basically straightforward shoot em up style games as far as we can see then we've got the instructions again in Italian for some reason only Italian and not any other uh, European languages and finally it tells you who the authors of the games are and it's got the Codemasters logo there. So here we have the first game which is MiG-29 Soviet Fighter which as you can see if you look at the messages popping up on the screen it was programmed by Paul Black and uh, music by Steve Barrett who did some of the music for some of the Mastertronic games I reviewed some time ago and uh, there's a high score table scrolling up the screen as well and a bit of information about how to uh, select weapons within the game and so on let's just get on with it and uh, you'll soon see what the name of the game is and the name of the game is to shoot stuff with your MiG-29 fighter so quickly we'll just go through with the normal weapon which is the default weapon which you get 30 shots of uh, basically it's afterburner style game you fly through the uh, uh, the landscape which is pretty nicely rendered as a fast 3d scrolling landscape just like in afterburner or space area perhaps uh, trying to shoot the enemies and try not to get shot yourself uh, you collect these uh, power-ups which drop down the screen occasionally uh, and if you crash and run out of energy or whatever it is on the left hand side on the bar it's game over so as you can see 
pretty short game if you're not very good at it. There are multiple weapons to choose from and you do so by pressing spacebar or some of the other keys I think you can use as well. I'm going to use a spacebar. So I'm going to go for weapon number two, uh, which is some kind of laser shot or missile or something, which makes it a lot easier to uh, shoot the ships coming towards you. Ships, planes even. Uh, and um, these things firing up from the ground, there are sort of ground based weapons that you can shoot bombs downwards, but I've tried a number of times and not been able to hit anything ground based at all. So basically I just did avoiding those and shooting the stuff in the air for the most part. Uh, and it's the things that shoot you from the ground that drain most of your health. That was a bit of a disaster. Uh, so my damage is not too bad at the moment. And as you can see there's a distance gauge at the top there which is counting down which has now got to zero. That means the end of the level you get refueled and you go into the second level. That little jingle there is quite familiar. I think that was in Ultimate Combat Mission, the Mastertronic game which I reviewed many moons ago. So let's get on to level two which is the desert and it's more of the same shoot stuff try not to get shot basically. The main difference here is some of the enemies are a bit more powerful and I've got killed almost straight away there. So let's give it another go. Oh I've got my name in the high score table. We don't really care about that do we? Let's give it another go going to be a pretty quick review of this because there's not much more to say about it. It's really difficult, uh, it's really hard not to get shot by most of the things that are coming towards you from various directions. Um, it's pretty unfair in that you, you only get one life and very limited uh, damage gauge compared to everything else on, in the game. So um, you get seem to get a score for just progression through the level and also obviously for shooting the uh, enemies which uh, that was even worse than the last go. Give it another try. I've never got past the second level. I've got a little bit further in the second level than I did on my previous go. Sometimes you get no enemies coming at you at all from the top, so it's just a case of trying to dodge the, uh, the fire from below. Oh, this is going badly all of a sudden. Should get some power ups going across the screen momentarily I think if I don't get shot in the meantime there we go so that's damage recovery which is probably the most vital just 10 kilometers to go till I get to the end of the stage now you usually get some stuff chucked at you at the end of the stage but not that time which is annoying uh, but at the end of each stage you do get a replenishment of all your weapons anyway so it's not too bad you don't get your damage replaced however in fact if anything it looks like I've got a lower damage than I had at the end of the previous round well, there you go so uh, again it's just trying to get as far as you can here's some gunships which are very powerful and should be avoided at all costs which I didn't manage to do but I did get over a thousand points that time uh, so I'm just going to give it one more go uh, and talk about the music the music uh, and the title screen is pretty cool there's no music in game it's just some pretty boring uh, spot effects uh, what sounds like helicopter propellers but there aren't any helicopters on the screen at the moment uh, some pretty terrible um, bomb dropping noises as well the in-game sounds are pretty poor and there's not even any noise for explosions really uh, and the uh, graphics are pretty cool I mean it's a pretty good rendition of the uh, afterburner style graphics um, slightly unusual that you're, you're kind of playing the enemy in the, in the form of the MiG 29 I suppose but it doesn't really matter it's just a plain shoot them up um, so for the for the capabilities of the Commodore 64 the graphics are pretty nice uh, not much variety in them in all honesty did quite well there and got to the second stage again I suppose I ought to show you the other weapons if it's all possible so this one that you just get two of is some kind of nuclear bomb I think which doesn't seem to do anything and then there's also ground based bombs that you can drop which again not, not serving a lot of purpose and that's game over again uh, and frankly I've seen enough you've probably seen enough um, it's got some nice graphics and a nice idea it seems to be quite well programmed but it's just ridiculously difficult and therefore no much fun at all so let's move on to the next game
So next up we have Laser Force, which has got quite a nice title screen with the sort of staples of Commodore 64 title screen, some nice Sid tune music and a scrolling message across the bottom there. Various options, uh, difficulty level can be changed and speed as well. And a weird option called Tape Motor which doesn't seem to do anything, not quite sure what that is. So uh, we'll get on with the game, uh, I want to get through these relatively quickly since there are four games to look at in this review. So this is actually a mixture of four different arcade, uh, styles of arcade game, uh, so something a little with a bit more depth than uh, the usual Commodore 64 shoot em up. Uh, you do get plenty of lives, so the first section uh, you go through a kind of scrolling shoot em up traditional sort of style, uh, lots of enemies to shoot, there's also these flames blasting out the side of the walls which are reminiscent of uh, Salamander, uh, although that was a horizontally scrolling game for the most part. Um, so after a little while this section will just end, there we go. And you move on to the second section which is quite obviously influenced by Centipede. So you've got the Centipede style things coming down the screen, lots of things to blast uh, and try not to get destroyed by. And after a certain amount of time, if you're lucky, you'll get to the end of the level without dying, but usually you do just die. Uh, and that then moves you on to the third stage, which you can't die on, but it's very difficult. Which is uh, reminiscent of uh, the docking stage of Mooncrestor, so you've got to land this spaceship on this uh, docking area uh, bang on to get the points, and I missed and crashed. Um, so nothing for me there. And finally, the final section, uh, you go down this sort of labyrinth which moves from side to side, you've got to get as far through it as possible uh, in a, I think it's an 80 second time limit or something like that. Uh, so you can go through it slowly which allows you to navigate the more difficult parts but then when it straightens up you speed up a bit to get further through it. Obviously the, the, uh, the faster you go through it the more points you get. No sound on this section at all. Um, so that's that bit completed. So that's basically the, the end of the first stage and you get a sort of summary of the points that you've got. Um, most of which you're in on the first section but then there's other parts to be added. You notice the second section is called Guardian but Guardian is actually spelt wrong. You've got Refueling which I've got nothing for and then the Corridor. Uh, so I've got 5,000 points so far and then you go back to the, ne the st next stage. is more of the same but slightly different uh, backgrounds, slightly different scenery if you like to navigate through. Um, there are points during the game where it's a bit unfair like that. Especially on this one where these things come out of the walls. Sometimes they'll come really close together and it's impossible to avoid them. Like this. Or I've managed to get around there reasonably well. Sometimes you'll get enemies coming from up behind you that you just can't avoid. Um, so it's not entirely fair. It's a little bit unbalanced with the difficulty at times. Uh, but I've got through that reasonably easily. You then get another centipede level. Again, I'm not entirely sure what the aim of this section is. Uh, other than to try and avoid getting blown up, which I usually end up doing. So there goes another life. That then leads to another docking stage, which is identical to the first one. Just try and get it on target. Oh, got it that time, so I get some points for that. I'm not quite sure how the points work. And then it's back onto the labyrinth, or whatever they called it, the corridor. Uh, so graphics are quite nice. The, uh, the spaceship's quite nicely drawn. Uh, the enemy graphics on those sections are quite nice as well. The uh, the best, most impressive thing is probably the the borders on the first section of each stage where the uh, the flames jump out the side of it and so on. That's quite nicely done. This section is particularly boring um, and relatively easy to navigate at a slow speed. There we go. That's two stages navigated through and... As you can see, I got 1,230 points for the docking that time. And some other points in the other sections. So I've got 9,000 points overall. And we go again with more of the same. Uh, different background again. We've got bubbles this time. And everything's turned into a red colour. The ship's gone red and all the enemies are red as well. So this is just a case of navigating through the bubbles, trying not to get blown up again. Uh, nice animation on the ship being blown up, by the way. I uh, probably won't get much further than this now because I'm on my last ship. My best hope is I can get through. Oh no, that's it. That's game over. So I end up with 11,000 points. Uh, not much more to say about the game. Nice graphics. Uh, the sound's pretty lacklustre. The music on the title screen's nice. Uh, there's not a lot of points in seeing it again. I'm probably not going to get much further than I did that time. 
you do tend to run out of lives. The big problem really is the second stage where there doesn't seem to be an obvious way to get through it without losing a life. So you basically have to sacrifice a life on every round, uh, which is not really fair. As I said, the difficulty is a bit random. Sometimes you get killed with things attacking you from behind almost immediately. Uh, so a little bit unfair and a bit random in that respect. But overall, nice idea, different uh, combination of different style levels makes it quite, uh, quite a lot of variety in it. Uh, and not a bad game overall, albeit with a few little flaws. So here we have game number three, which is Terra Cognita, a game by Stephen Curtis and converted by Martin Sexton. As you can see, this was originally released in 1986. And uh, the instructions are basically there. You guide your ship over the alien landscape, try to reach the mothership, and some other stuff happens. And there's a nice uh, sort of title screen graphic. Pretty nicely done with the Codemasters logo on. So let's get started with the game. It's basically a vertically scrolling shoot 'em up, um, but with some puzzle sort of elements. There's various objects to collect. You collect those pluses, they speed you up. F restores your fuel. The blue thing there gives you a bonus. And that thing is, I think, invulnerability temporarily. Um, and if you hit these red and yellow stripe platforms, you get a time shift which sends you right back to the beginning of the level, which is incredibly annoying. Uh, you can also see that the enemies kind of converge on you and kill you quite easily and that's game over straight away. Uh, the blue squares you can see with the red rectangle in the middle of them, uh, if you hit them you crash so they're it's like, almost like a maze that you've got to navigate your way through whilst also trying to shoot the enemies and that bit at the beginning there basically if you don't hit both of them on the first attempt you won't get them and you'll get hit by them which is very annoying. hit the time shift again which sends me all the way back to the beginning which again you then got to try not to get hit by those two nice get past them that time oh now I've kind of speeded up and hit the blue bit and that's game over again you can see it's quite frustrating graphics are I think probably mostly porting over from the Amstrad they look like a bit Amstrad-y to me at least let's try and see if we can get a bit further this time uh, the minuses, by the way, slow you down, which is quite useful. Uh, and the L is an extra life, so that's also a useful thing, which you definitely need if you go down this channel, because there's a basically a, a corridor that you can't get out of without losing a life, which is terrible game design. Getting a bit further this time, though, so let's see what else we can come across. There's another bonus. And another... Uh, I assume that's invulnerability, I don't actually know, because I'd rather not crash into anything if I can uh, avoid it. So yeah, there's not actually many enemies to dispose of in the game, it's mostly just avoiding these things and collecting these uh, icons. Lots of bonus points to be had the further you get through, and yeah, that's something I can't uh, actually crash into, and again, that's, uh, that's a maze that you can't get through. Uh, unless you're going really slowly, I suspect. Uh, some horrible clashing background graphics there. Uh, so I'm just trying to make... I'm now going too slowly because I'm trying to make my way up here. My fuel's running out. Which again will result in another lost life. There's a bit of fuel. Oh, you're joking me. I just run out of fuel just as I'm about to collect that fuel power up. So yeah, there's some real awful game design in this. Pretty terrible graphics. The sounds aren't great either. Uh, there's not a lot of shooting up action to actually be had. It's more just trying to make as much progress as you can without crashing into these um, impenetrable walls. There's another life. Um, so yeah, all in all, it's pretty boring. And yet there's another thing that I can't get past, and that's another one. So try and avoid that as well. It is just pretty awful stuff. Uh, there's not much good to be said about it and that's I'm on my last life so it's not going to last much longer I'm not going to play it again Lo running low on fuel there's some fuel which I'll probably just get to in time yeah this is actually the furthest I've got in the game oh and I lost a life just by something crashing into me so all in all pretty awful not any need to really play through it again you've seen all you're going to see I probably wouldn't get that far again in another 10 attempts anyway uh, pretty terrible game and uh, I've already had enough of it.
So here we have the final of the four games on this compilation, Poltergeist, uh, which is developed by Gavin Rayburn, who also did Laser Force on this compilation. You might see a few similarities within the game. Uh, the graphical style is a little bit similar, and uh, also there's a few other bits and pieces that are kind of reminiscent of that other game, although the game itself is completely different. So uh, there's lots of things scrolling across the screen there. Some nice Sid music in the background as well. Uh, pretty straightforward gameplay. Basically you just shoot everything and you've got to shoot some boxes on the screen. Uh, once you've shot them all you can go to a landing pad and move to the next level. There's also extra weapons to be picked up. So let's get on with the game and demonstrate all those things. It's uh, horizontally scrolling but it's a defender style horizontal scrolling so you can go backwards and forwards within the same level uh, it also loops around so um, as you'll see in a second I'll shoot that little box there uh, that's the only one you've got to shoot on this level I could land on this landing pad but just to show that the level does wrap around go back to that thing in a minute there it is again uh, so to get upgrade your weapons uh, you collect these little blobs there which I've just collected little white blob on a post, press a key on the keyboard and I've now upgraded to triple way fire which is a good thing. As you can see there's a lot of enemies constantly respawning, uh, you can hold the fire button down to auto fire which is nice, nice uh, bit of game design there, always a preference, oh and there goes my first life. Uh, that little box in the middle, there's so many ships left, that's exactly the same as appeared on Laser Force. So uh, I'll find, I've basically completed this level now, I could stay on it as long as I like, and shoot as much as I like, uh, but it's more fun to move on to the next level. So you land on this landing pad, and you get a little summary at the end of each level to say how many ships you've got left, what weapon you're using, how many shields you've got left. Uh, the shield is more like a smart bomb actually, I think. Uh, and um, that's pretty, pretty much it, your score as well. Um, so let's move on to the next level, which is more of the same. There's not much variety in the graphics, as you can see. Uh, there is also a smart bomb as I mentioned, press the space bar and it basically blasts everything on the screen. Um, so having a diagonal fire helps with shooting these things uh, and I'm just basically going to stick with diagonal fire for now because it's the easiest way to shoot the stuff on the ground. Try and demonstrate some of the other weapons when the opportunity presents itself. So I think there's four or five of the, uh, the little boxes to shoot on this stage. And it's pretty much the same graphics as the first stage, but the colour scheme's changed. Uh, some kind of cityscape thing going on. Uh, lots of like stalactites and stalagmites, a bit of water. Um, not a lot of variety in the backgrounds. Not a lot of variety in the enemies either. It's just a constant sort of... Well, they've all like, given up coming at me for some reason. So a constant sort of flurry of enemies coming at you usually, but um, not on this occasion. I bet I've changed direction. Oh, here we go. They're coming back now. See, there's a few things dripping from the ceiling, slightly reminiscent to something like Whizball, maybe. Uh, but overall, it's pretty much generic shooter fare. Um, that's not to say that it's not enjoyable. Oops, there goes another life. You do get an extra life at the start of every stage, by the way. I think I've collected all the uh, the boxes on this one already. Um, so I just need to really make my way to the platform, hopefully. Yeah, there we go which uh, moves me on to the next level and more of the same. Slight change in the enemies is now got some things that throw stuff at you from the top of the screen and some that are slightly more difficult to destroy. And this level is probably, well certainly the most tricky one so far. Oops, there goes another life. The lives do go thick and fast. The idea basically is get through the level as quickly as you can so you get the extra life. Um, in most cases that's not too difficult. Dodging things is almost impossible with so many things being thrown at you. But on this one, you can see you've got these little dots to get rid of to, uh, to reveal the, the boxes I've got to shoot. There's only the two boxes to shoot, but I've got to get through all these blobs first to have any chance of shooting them, which I've now done, which means I can make my way to the platform again. And the sooner the better for this level, I feel. Oh, and there goes another life. I've still got four lives left, so it's not too bad. Uh, you can go quite fast through the levels, but that just makes it more difficult to avoid the enemies. So there you go, that was level 3 completed. And this one's definitely the more claustrophobic, uh, set in a cave, sort of reminiscent of something like Scramble maybe. The principle's exactly the same, it's just a little bit harder to shoot stuff now. 
and this is where this weapon might come in actually if I switch to this weapon there's one that just shoots up and down which makes it a little bit annoying to try and dodge stuff it does make it a lot easier to shoot all the things on the ground some very tight squeezes to get through there as well and there goes another life basically if you lose one life per level it's not really the end of the world I'm not sure if I've got everything on this level yet or not I don't want to try and land on the uh, landing pad yet because if you do and you haven't destroyed all the boxes then uh, you die yeah there was a couple more to get rid of there so oh come on this is getting silly now having this power up is rubbish at least this one shoots forward I just hope I've got oh, I've just got to get this one how am I going to get that now with this thing? this could be difficult oh no Oh, that's turned into a complete disaster after being relatively straightforward. Um, so what I'll do is give it another quick go and see if I can get a little bit further. So I'm back on uh, level 4 now, and I'm not going to make the mistake of switching to the up and down weapon this time, because that just didn't work for me at all. I'll just persevere... Oh, annoying. Uh, I'll just persevere with trying to blast the things on the ground uh, with this diagonal laser, which if you get close to things shouldn't be too difficult, there's one of them gone, and another, and another, and I think that's all of them now, so all I'm going to do now is find the platform and I should be out of this level which would be nice because it's really annoying, there we go, not got quite as many points this time around but uh, just try to rattle through the levels as quickly as possible. I've got a different option here, so I'm just going to switch to this option. Okay, so this one um, fires forwards and backwards, which might be handy, although I haven't got a lot of forward firepower now. I've got a few lives left, so hopefully I can get a little bit further in the game. Yes. Although they're rapidly decreasing again. So there is a bit of strategy involved with picking the right weapon to uh, get yourself through these uh, levels. The best one for uh, eliminating the different boxes around the screen. Uh, but generally it's just like fly around and blast stuff. It's kind of fun. Uh, the graphics aren't spectacular but they do the job. Is that the landing platform? It is. Um, they're not spectacular but they do the job, uh, not a lot of variety in them but um, it's a fast paced and fairly enjoyable game overall. I think this is as far as I've got so this could be a, an interesting experience. Oh, crashing into the landscape of course doesn't help. The good news is when you lose a life you don't lose your weapons and you don't lose, you don't have to restart the level and collect all the boxes again. Uh, so that's good, um, I'm a fan of that. Uh, what have we got here? Still the same one. Let's we'll see if we get any extra different weapons. Let's try this one. Well, that's rubbish. What is the point of that? That's just like a really fast blast you think oh, That's garbage. Well, that's shit now. Can't believe I've picked up that weapon. It's awful. I've been conned. So I'm on my last life. I'm probably not going to last too much longer. Um, just to summarise. Uh, pretty fun game and probably the best of the four on the compilation. Uh, Laser Force was probably second best uh, and MiG-29 was probably third best and finally the worst one was probably uh, Terra Cognita. Uh, so I got my name in there at least, bit of progress. So all in all, I mean you can't really argue this compilation cost three quid when it came out. So three, sorry, four reasonably playable shoot-em-ups of varying uh, degrees of quality for three quid can't be argued with and it didn't even cost me that much so I'll uh, obviously be keeping it and uh, all in all it's been quite an enjoyable blast through some uh, quick fire games nothing too spectacular nothing too groundbreaking but uh, reasonably good fun on the Commodore 64